day two, secret two. So today we're gonna learn uh, how the biggest enterprises in the world sold small to get huge. Nobody just came out of the gate doing $100 billion. They all uh, had laser-like focus, they knew who their target market was or they figured it out and then they scaled like crazy. And so that's what I wanna show you today. I had 100, 100x your growth using one one hundredth of the resources. No joke, no lie. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. I didn't come up with all this, but I did see it in action. I have learned from the best in the world and now I wanna teach it to you. And I wanna see you put it into action. I wanna see you be wildly successful. This is gonna be super exciting. And then we're gonna go hop on some private jets, fly around, have some fun. Let's get there. Let's get it. Here's what we're gonna to learn today. A couple things you're gonna really need to know about ad pricing. How to skip the guesswork of targeting. That's a great one. 10x sales by expanding your customer personas. Walk you through that whole process. And how to uncover the emotions that trigger sales. The emotions that really, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. I'm pretty emotional about that one. So this year, Herbert Bayard Swope, can't give you the formula of success, but I can give you the formula for failure, which is try to please everybody. And unfortunately, most uh, business owners, executives, founders are all guilty of this. And the reason why is uh, people are fearful. Either one, they don't know, they don't know how to dial down the target audience properly. Number two, they're afraid that it's so hard to sell right now that if I don't expand my audience super wide, then I'm going to be, I'm not going to have enough people to sell to, which is the exact opposite and wrong. It's counterintuitive. So let's talk about relevancy scores. What is it? Why does it matter? When you're running digital ads, the ad platforms, they want people to have a good experience. And if they're getting blasted with ads that have no relevance to them whatsoever, they're not, you're not, people aren't going to click on them. And so the platform's not really going to make sure money and it's just going to annoy the users and they're just going to go away. So it's in their best interest for everybody to make sure that whatever ads are being presented, the messaging is on point. The hook is really, really sexy so that people are clicking through it's converting, it's making money, it's working. So what they end up doing is the, the ads that have a really low relevancy score well, they will charge you a lot more money for per click. So you will have to just jack up your, uh, your bids on your ads. If your message is, if it's not enticing, if the message is weak, if the hook is weak and you, you, I mean, you can try to just bulldoze through with boatloads of cash. Good luck to you. But why do that when there's much easier way, there's an easier way, there's a cheaper way. So a couple different things when it comes to targeting, we're going to go into a whole exercise around this, but number one, don't waste impressions on non-consumers. Don't get your message in front of people that would never, ever be a customer. And so many people are guilty of that. And you think, oh, this is my target market. And the fact it might not be. And so there may be people within that target market, but for the most part, every, a lot of people are wasting impressions on people that will never, ever buy from you. Number two, grab att attention, compel them to take action. So are, have you tested a hundred hooks? Do you know what a hook is? I, a lot of, a lot of time I see these so many companies, especially tech companies, software companies, they have ads out there that it's just it's some generic stock photo and it talks about their benefit or their, their features. Nobody cares. Your click through rate, your conversion rate, it's got, it's got to just hurt. It's got to really hurt. And, but, and, and it's not your fault if no one's ever shown you this. But now I'm going to show you so you'll know and you can do it better. And last thing is, you know, we want to get your, your cost per click down, your cost per, cost per acquisition to a reasonable level. So then you can do what I showed you before, right? Then it makes sense where you can, for $30, sell somebody something for $10, $20, $30. That's going to cover your ad costs, right? So then you don't have to, you're not losing money generating leads. It's free to generate leads. I'm sorry. I love these cartoons so much that you're going to see a bunch of them. Tom Fishburne is amazing. He's got this uh, company called the Marketunist, and they create all of these wonderful cartoons to poke fun at us marketers and salespeople that are doing things suboptimally, right? Like really pointing out when we're <laughs> being absurd. 
And it's great because then you go, oh, yeah, you know what? Like, I don't ever want to be that guy. I'm not going to do that again. And so I've sit in, sat in on uh, meetings just like this one, not this bad, but similar. How do we interrupt people with our annoying and irrelevant advertising in a more customer-centric way, right? It's like, oh, buzzwords and whatever. And we totally, they've missed the point here. So the point is this. The more general your messaging is, the less effective it's going to be. But the more you can target down to the person and empathize with them and make them feel heard and understood, the more revenue you're going to drive. You're going to see your, your conversions go through the roof. You're going to see your click rate go through the roof. And your company will take off. But this is one of those things where it's not your fault if you didn't know how to do it. But I'm going to show you how to do it so that uh, you don't have to be guilty of this. Four-step process to finding a profitable niche you can dominate. So this is an amazing book, Play Bigger. Um, one of the CEOs uh, I've worked with recommended this to me, and it's brilliant. And the whole point of this book is if you want to kill it, if you want to crush it, you got to become a category king, right? Or maybe you don't. If you just want to be average, uh, just copy what everyone else is doing and just try to like carve out, carve out a little space there. But if you really want to be excellent and you want to grow a company and you want to be a category king, find a category that you can dominate, right? And then Peter Thiel said, competition's for losers, right? Don't go in and try to go up against somebody that uh, is, is just got great people, great talent, um, already got a great base of customers and a lot of money. That's just a recipe for pain. So whatever it is that you're doing today, go at least three deep, go into a micro niche. So I'll give you an example, right? A lot of companies say, I'm going to dominate this, this industry. I'm going to, I'm going to sell to the medical industry or the tech hardware industry or manufacturing or e-commerce, right? Instead, going three deep looks like this. If you can, you want to serve the medical industry, you go one deep at surgeon, excuse me, two deep at surgeons, three deep dental surgeons. You want to dominate. You want to be a category king uh, for a, your SaaS platform serving dental surgeons. You will kill it. Right. Well, everyone's a generalist. You're a specialist. You're going to blow them away. Tech hardware. Right. Well, for, I'll give you an example of sensors and then optical sensors. Right. Like that's an example. You can go three deep and just own, be the category king. And you can do a hundred million dollars or more uh, in this little micro niche. Guaranteed. No problem at all. Manufacturing, 3D printing, bioprinting is another example. E-commerce, food and bev, pet food, like Chewy.com, billion dollar company. Right. Three deep micro niche. So find how to find your underserved markets. Ads are such, running ads are the best way that I found, the least expensive way, where we can test the messaging and we can test the uh, you know, test the market and see is there enough of a demand here, right? Because if you um, you even before you in some times you, before you even run the ads, when you just start building the target market, it'll tell you how big the target market is. Uh, next thing, dominate the subcategory serve those customers better than anyone else. If you go deep, the, once again, the generalists aren't going to keep up with you. Um, I've worked for, I've, I've been hired by companies who've tried to do this and failed. They're just like, we're going to serve everybody. And they can't. Eventually you can get there. You can take like salesforce.com, right? And they're in government and they're in B2B and they're in the consumers. Like there's so many different places, um, but they had to start, they had to start small and pick one. Right. I was with I was with one of the top executives at Salesforce and he was telling me we were out to dinner and he was telling me about in government, right? Like how he dominated in government. And he just got laser focused on one small little piece of that. And he's like, I didn't think honestly, I didn't think it was gonna much would come out of it. Um, but they went, they started selling like five seats here, five seats there, focusing on that on that this serving this one demographic. And then, boom, all of a sudden, that five-seat license, they turned around and the government's like, we need another 500 seats. And then 1,000 and then 2,000. And it just, it, just, it just took the country by storm. It was crazy. So think about that. Think about that. You can become a billion-dollar brand like Chewy.com, focusing on going three deep on a subcategory and become the category king. Vision drives decision. This is one I always think about every single time is if your customers, if they can't see in their mind, if they can't make the jumps from where they are today to where they want to get with your company, they're not going to buy from you. Like a confused mind doesn't buy. And so you have to like lay the breadcrumbs 
and show them along the way, like, this is how easy it is to get where you want to go. Like step one, step two, step three, and show them a bunch of people that have done it, right? And ha- let them hear from those people so they believe, they have the vision and go, oh yeah, you know what? If this person, this person, this person, this person could do it, they're just like me, I could do it, right? But if they think, oh, you know what? All, the only people this works for is superstars, rock stars, like, you know, people with the highest IQs, the people that have all these abilities I don't have, they're not gonna, they're not gonna buy from you. So vision drives decision. That is one that is drilled into my head because it's, I've seen it in myself where so many times I didn't buy something that could have, that really would have helped me accelerate myself because I just didn't see, I was like, well, it worked for all these other people, but I don't see it working for me. Uh, and then later on, all of a sudden one they, they the company got their messaging, right. Or I saw uh, a great customer testimonial and they talked about their entire process, what they went through. And I was like, wow, they're just like me. They feel what I feel. They thought what I what I think. They want to go where I they, they're at now, where I want to get to. And so, show them, hold their hand, and take them through that. And this is how you do it. And this is uh, so. This guy Don Miller has a company called Story Brand, and he uh, he wrote. He, he's in Hollywood, a Hollywood writer. Uh, wrote some some really big movies. Uh, then he wrote some books. Said so some best New York Times bestseller books, and. Now he's helping businesses understand that our brains are wired to understand story in a very, um, in a very similar fashion. And this is it right here, right? This is the customer story. And if you can walk a customer through this customer story, you will win. You will dominate your competition because very few people know how to do this. So first mistake companies make is they, uh, they, they're going to be in the story. They're going to be the hero, right? They're going to be the hero and I'm going to come in and I'm going to save you. And that's a mistake. Right, because in uh, in, a, in a customer's mind, they want to be the hero, right? And so, if you come in and they're a um, supporting character <laughs> and their own story, you're not going to get the sale. So, in this particular place, every single time, how can you make the customer the hero of the story and not yourself? Take your ego out of it, which is hard to do, or it's just easy to think of yourself as the hero. So, we got to flip that around a little bit. So, you have a customer; they're the character, right? And they have a problem. And then here's where you come in. They need a helpful guide. And that's you, right? The helpful guide is going to give them a plan. And you say, here's what we're going to do to get you where you, you have this problem. You want to get, you want to get from here to here, right? This is how you're going to do it. And then you're going to call them to action, which means you're going to challenge them. Here's, you're going to do this thing. And then that action is going to result in either success or failure. And you, we need to call out what those things are. You're going to remind the people what's at stake. This is what success looks like. This is what you want. And this is what failure looks like. And I'm going to show you pretty much every great movie uh, has this basic, this story arc. So here's Hunger Games. And you could plug in any movie you want. You do Star Wars. You could do the latest, you could do the latest uh, Top Gun movie. Any movie you can think of, you know, rom-coms or even just like romantic movies, right? Person, they have a problem, right? They meet somebody who's going to help them. So in this one, the Hunger Games, you got Katniss and she must survive and stay good and authentic. And this is, I stole this from, from Don Miller. Um, Don, if you're watching this, you're amazing and I love you. Uh, and thank you for giving this to the marketing world. It's brilliant. So anyway, Katniss must survive, stay good and authentic. That's a problem. She meets Hamish, right? He's one, he's a little bit, he's older now, he's drinking, um, but he's got the wisdom to help get her there. And he's won the Hunger Games, so he knows what to do. So he's going to help. And then what, what's, what she got to do? She got to endear the public to get sponsors and he calls her to action when she competes. Right. She, he doesn't really call her action, but the, you know, the, the, whatever it is, the, um, tribunal or whatever call you, she's forced into it. Like you're going to compete and you're either going to survive or not. And so what happens like the, her, her actions are going to result in one of two things. District 12 rejoices, right? She won for the district or she dies and district 12 is crushed. Right. So, so all you have to do is overlay this and I'm going to show you on the next slide, we're going to make it even easier how to do this. So here it is, right? Get very, very clear. Who is your dream customer? And it has to be, you have to dial in on one, like if you're, you can sell to five different people, but you got to do this. Each person is going to have different reasons. Um, if you're going to have five different avatars or personas or target, target markets, um, but get very, very clear on who that is. And in the later video, I'm going to help you with that as well. So dream customer, what is it they want, right? Get really clear. They don't want your product. They don't want your solution. They want whatever your product solution is going to help them to get, right? They need to get somewhere. 
they have a problem, right? And this is um, who or what is the villain, right? Like, let's just use a marketing example. So I have, uh, say, small business owners, small restaurant owner, right? Owns a, a burrito restaurant. Who is the villain? The villain is uh, market, marketers, marketing agencies <clears throat> that are just going to swoop in and take their money um, and, and trick them into uh, trick them into doing business with them, build them a website, and then take off with their money and never see them again. And the website doesn't drive any traffic right? Externally, what do they need, right? So they need a website that'll help people. Um, it'll show them the food, great pictures of the food. Um, they'll be able to see the menu with that. It's not going to pop up an annoying PDF on your phone. Like the menu will be native on their phone so that people can just, oh, okay, very easily see what's on the menu. Um, internally, how is this problem making them feel? They're probably really, really stressed out that uh, they're not getting their, their restaurants no longer growing. This has been a really hard time the past few years for restaurant owners. Um, and so maybe this is, they have uh, aspirations to start a family, but economically where the restaurant is today, they can't start a family, right? And so having a conversation with your customer, I'm going to give you a whole framework for this. Um, we'll, we'll be able to make all of this clear to you. And then philosophically, why is this just plain wrong? Like they shouldn't have to put up with this because there are actually are amazing marketers that focus on restaurants and can do great work for restaurant tours. Right. And then they meet that guide. Right. And so the guide is somebody who there's that all they do is market, uh, help restaurants market. And so they have all of this expertise in this area. Right. And they can empathize with you. They understand your pain because they've, they've worked with so many people just like you. And maybe they're, maybe they got into this field marketing for restaurants because their family owns a restaurant and they saw the pain and the struggle that their family went through. They I can empathize with them and they, they, you need to be an authority. You need to be able to demonstrate authority, which is, you know, I've helped hundreds of restaurants. Um, we've increased, uh, we've increased their revenue, you know, on average, you know, $60,000, uh, $60,000 a quarter. And this is how we've done it. And you see a whole bunch of people tell their story of working with this company. So you give them a plan. The very first step is you're going to do this, right? You're going to join now, sign up, free trial, you know, book now with us, whatever it is. If they're not ready to do that, if you haven't quite got them here, there yet, um, or they're, they're just, they're still a little bit hesitant. Um, you got to do some more work. And so that's where you give them a transitional plan, right? Which is a free webinar, email newsletter, some way to make them more comfortable, reduce the risk for them. And that's where that value ladder comes in. And then you show them how this will end in success, right? How will their life look uh, after they've engaged with you? Like show them with this new state, like they have this aspirational identity. They want to be this kick-ass restaurateur. And maybe if this one becomes successful, then they open a second one and a third one. And, you know, 10 years from now, they've got, they've got a 50 chain restaurant, right? And then they just, they never have to worry about money again in their lives. And how they're like, how are their life feel better when they engage with you, right? Not just what it'll look like, but also how, how they feel better. And that's where we got we to gotta help them realize the emotions, like remind them of the emotions that they're going to feel. And we want to help them avoid failure, right? So if what happens if they don't take action today or if they, if they fail because they don't do, take the right action or they don't take any action, um, what, is that, what does that look like for them? And you got to help them walk them through and remind them about the pain and of what, what's there, right? Like just that, this is one where you slow down, you slow down and you just, sometimes you listen. Um, but most of the time you, you're kind of feeding back to them. Like, yeah, this is, this is what it's going to be like, because you know, this change, this journey you're going to go on, it's not going to be easy, right? Like Katniss, uh, that was not an easy journey. Like there's, the journey is never easy. You're going to have to go through a transformation. Transformation is painful. And so one of the great things to do is to remind yourself, um, what's at stake if I, don't, if I don't make it to the end, if I don't transform, if I don't become the hero, what is that going to look like? And then lastly, walk them through how them becoming the hero, getting there, getting to the finish line, getting this thing they want. How does that raise their status, right? And they go from being unsure to confident because they've, They've developed this confidence over, over having um, positive reference experiences. They went from broke to wealthy. They went from worried to relaxed. They went from beginning to expert, you know, whatever that is. So I'm going to show you um, in a second how we do this for customers. And this is really, it's, you know, when I show this people, it blows them away all the time. 
And so you need to know, like, if you have, this is great if you have existing customers. Um, it's If there's a different way to go about it for people that have zero customers or starting out, I'm assuming that you have a base of customers. And so we can reach out to the base customers. We can have conversations. We can understand these things from them. Like, why do they choose you, right? What caused them to go with you over your competition? What does it mean to them? Like, what emotions drove that sale? You know, if they didn't get what you, if they didn't get what they needed from you, how would they, have, how would that have made them feel? And then what anxieties were they feeling that, that slowed down or held back the purchase? Like maybe they wanted to buy with you three months ago, six months, a year ago, but they just, they, did, they weren't there yet. They had some anxieties and understanding like, what is that? Because if you understand what anxieties are holding them back, you can call that out early. You can say, oh, like, you know, a lot of people feel this way and this is, this is why you shouldn't feel this way and da, 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 right? And then lastly, this is a great one. Where do they hang out online? And cohorts of people generally go to the same places, right? Same forums, same groups. They read the same online magazines, etc. Template we developed over the years and it is incredibly powerful. So this year, it'll... Uh, need a little bit of customization based on your use case, company name, your customer's desired vision, out, state or outcome, and the product or service that you're providing, right? But, so let me break down like, the different pieces of it so you understand why it is the way that it is, because this is critical for it to be effective. Very first thing here, right? If you've received this questionnaire, it's because you truly matter to us and we want to understand you on a deeper level so we can better serve you in ways that truly matter. If, the, if this is about you and your company, hey, we're, uh, we need you to fill out the survey, here's a gift card to Amazon, you're not gonna great, get a great participation rate and you're not gonna get people that are invested in answering it. By making it about them and not about you, right? We, if you truly matter, we wanna understand you in a deeper letter, lever, level so we can serve you better, that's, that's that little shift that makes a world of difference. And then we tell them what to expect. It's only going to be, it's going to be two minutes or less. And there's seven questions that inform us how we can continue to innovate and meet your needs at the highest level. I want to thank you so much for choosing company name um, to, you know, help them with their desired outcome or vision state. You mean the world to us and we hope that you truly feel it through every handshake, conversation, event. You can change those based on your company. It could be a you know, phone call, webinar, um, interaction, that type of thing. And then you put your name and the entire team here at company. Now this here, will you answer these questions honestly, yes or no? Um, if somebody puts no, you know they're a joker. Um, and, but that particular question, there's research behind just asking that question. It changes people's minds. And so it causes people to just slow down and be more honest and authentic in their answers, which is going to help you. So that's why that's in there. What problem were you looking to solve when you signed up or purchased? Right? You want to understand like what was going through their mind? You know, what's, what, what did they need to do? What questions or concerns did you have before considering our product or service? This is where we're going to find out like what their anxieties were and what, what may have held them back or slowed them down. If you didn't choose our product or service, what would you have done instead? This is, an, this is a really good one. I'll show you why on the next page. What was the most memorable or impactful experience or result from our product or service? We love hearing these. This question, the answers you get to this, this will help write your future ads. Uh, your ads and even if they're, you're running commercials, um, it's going to put you in the, in the mind of the customer of what they were feeling, what they were going through, how it helped them beyond features and benefits, beyond the obvious. What was it about our company that got you to choose us? This one, all of a sudden, you will get thing, answers back from customers that you never could have thought of. How can we be even better for you? This will help you with innovation going forward. Um, be careful. Sometimes uh, don't, don't just you know, go with everything people say. You're gonna get a ton of people that just are gonna say uh, cheaper, less expensive, ignore those. And don't add features based on, you know, a lot of people may ask for features that might sound good in their head, but it just wastes your, your people's money. But you will get some really insightful information from this one. And then where do you go online to research or read about you know, our product or service? This will tell you where you should be spending your advertising dollars. How likely are you to tell your friends, family, coworkers about our product or service? And this one here, you can see, you know, take their temperature. All right, now we're going to jump over. This is where the magic happens. 
So this is an example of a company we, we used this on a while ago. They bought a, they went, we were going across the country. They bought a travel company, um, a van rental company, and uh, they're taking it nationwide. So a lot of times I'll get called, uh, VC firms will call me up that we work with and they've purchased a company and now they're gonna scale it you know, nationwide or worldwide and they'll say, you know, we want you to help us grow this thing. And so I love doing that, it's tons of fun. So please tell us what you use the van for, right? So we have this, what questions are concerns? So you'll see how all of these are mapped, right? But then we break it down. So I, I start to segment so we can see the size of the markets, right? And so we found was the different segments. Now people write all different things and then we could bucket them into a whole bunch of groups. And I color code them and you can see how big they are. So church or missions that were using the vans, if they're going to concert or events or even a band using them, corporate functions. Um, if it doesn't fall into any great category, there's an other uh, party, right? So bachelorette parties, um, things like that team uh, sports field trip type of thing. You can see this is a pretty sizable one here. And vacations, look at this, it just goes on and on and on, people, and then a couple for weddings. So all of a sudden you know, you know which, where should I be focusing my energy? What are the biggest markets and what are biggest segments? And then later on you can say, as you dominate those segments, you can move to the next. Here, we can see the anxieties that held people back. I was worried about the condition of the vans. They've always been perfect. Now you can show them in a video the conditions of the vans. Uh, I wanna make sure the seats are removable. You can do a YouTube video or a Facebook video or Instagram video of the showing them remo showing, removing the seats. This was, talks about uh, strict policies and rules, right? So people will just, they'll tell you what they wanna hear. Like they'll be like, this is how to sell to me. This is what I need to do. Right? Do we get a clean van? I was nervous about meeting up with the van driver. Um, so you can do a video introducing the van drivers. All of these things, like do these up front. Get, get these anxieties out of the way, get them covered. What's your right to win, right? Why you over your competitors or um, just non-consumption? They, maybe they just don't book a van at all. A lot of people said, well, I'm gonna fly or I'll just use my own car, right? Why? So here, they, you can go through, uh, I had no choice but to rent a vehicle, right? We had separate vehicles. Um, you know, if I didn't do this, I would have driven my own car, I would have just driven, taken multiple vehicles, um, flown down New Jersey and rent from Bandango. This is gonna give you a lot of information and you can use this in your marketing, your sales, your marketing and advertising um, because you understand, well, if they weren't to rent from us, they would do this thing or why they did rent from us and then you kind of hit that point, hit, nail that thing home, man. Innovation and improvement, right? So these are things like, how can we be even better? I need a deal for my church, right? We're trying to get rid of our 15 passenger van, but would rather rent on a weekly basis than buying a new one. Repeat customer, right? Would help tremendously if, if um, someone would have talked about how much luggage space was available in each van. Um, don't charge extra for taking out the seats. Recommend strategies on where to park large vans in urban areas. Um, streamline the, the process so I could fill out forms online. Half day rentals as opposed to full. So you don't have to act on all these, but it's gonna be great information from people. Here's one I love, the memories, right? This, this, this is gonna write your future ads for you. Um, some evenings I would take a handful of teenagers out to pick up pizzas for the whole group as a church, right? They loved having the ox court option um, and talking over the music. They sang so loud and laughed so much that you didn't want those moments to end, right? You could do a video of that. Um, this here with the band, um, they, got to, they played to a packed house uh, to kick off Ocean City Bike Week. Seeing the Northeast Coast was a joy. Vans are such a pleasure to drive. Being able to see the amazing countryside from the large windows of your vans also Everyone playing their favorite songs through the USB connector. We have special moments singing and listening and learning about each other's personalities, right? There's just so many, just one after another after another. There's like a hundred ads here that you could, you could make, right? And then you could test them, see which ones work the best. And then where do they hang out, right? Google, lots of Google. That's where they do their research. Kayak.com, but it's almost all Google. You know, I would have expected a little more Facebook, 
Um, but this was several years ago too. So Facebook, um, YouTube, I'm sure it's another one. And then competing op options, right? If they didn't rent the van, what would they have done instead? Chartered a bus, hired a driver in a van for more money, limo company, Peter Pan bus, bus train, rent a limousine. So this is, this is great business intelligence here. By the way, would this help you out if you had access to this template? And the reason I'm asking is this, is the Google survey, it makes it really, really easy. There's a few different ways to send this out. Number one, you just edit this to, um, uh, you put your, your information in here, uh, you change the colors, you can put pictures, things like that. And then you hit send. Now there's three different ways to use this uh, template. Number one is you upload, you can upload a CSV of all your emails and you, Google can send it out that way. Number two, uh, you can embed this into a web page on your site, drive people to that web page. Number three, you can include a link in your email, next email blast to a form like this and get it out to everybody that way. So the only thing you have to do after that is you go through, um, this is a very, you know, has the, all the different questions. What I do is I break down the relevant questions to segmentation, to the anxieties, to the right to win, innovation and improvement, memories, where they hang out, competing options, right? So seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's your seven questions right here. So it makes it very, very easy. Um, so I hope that's helpful. The link is down below. You can purchase this template, it's $30. And we're gonna go, you're gonna see what's next. Secret number three, how Alphabet, Meta, Apple, and Tesla train legions of their customers to gladly give up food, sleep, and sex to be first in line to overpay for their latest product or services. This is a fun one. I'll see you there.